All right, let's go ahead and get started here. This is going to be a landscape painting. Hopefully it looks like a fall painting. This is, this is what I'm shooting for today. I do have liquid white in the sky and nowhere else. But uh, I'm going to make this very light blue starting out here at the bottom. Very light. I'm using a one inch brush. Very, very light. I'm using a one inch brush because I can control where I'm putting my collars at. I mean, I grab a two inch and I'll finish it up with a two inch. But for now, we're going to do this one inch brush. Very light. Actually, just this area here is going to be seen probably anyway. It's going to get a little darker as we come up, but let me put the make it real light here at the bottom. That's pretty light. <laughs> A little darker as we're coming up. I got a picture I'm looking at today. And as I said before, pictures are pictures are just ideas to me most of the time. A little darker probably over in here. Yeah, you don't have to follow a picture to the to the T, I mean, you don't, you just don't have to. Use a picture to help you give you a reference and then make the painting your own. This is Prussian blue. I'm throwing a little Prussian in here. Around the top areas in this corner over here. Right up in here. Let's get us a two inch brush. But I will say, if you're just starting out painting, use a picture and try to just paint what you see. Try to follow along with the picture if you're just starting. If you've been painting a little while, you don't, you don't really need to do a picture. It's just an idea at that point. Because you run out of ideas. you got to have something to look at sometimes. I look at pictures all the time trying to find things to paint. Just whipping stuff off the top of your head. You can do that. But it gets more and more difficult as time goes on because you basically run out of ideas until you see something that really grabs your fancy. See, this is this is good. This is this is what I want. Real light here, darker coming up. I like it because this is going to be this is going to be tree mostly. All this over here. I like that. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is a river right here. I'm going to take, I'm going to take some white. I probably got too much stuff on my brush here. I want it lighter than that, whiter than that. But for now, I think this is okay. We'll just, I'll just use it. I'm going to throw a little bit of this in this water. I've got to figure out where the water goes to here. I think it's up in here. I quickly sketch some things up so fast I really don't know what I've done. <laughs> I know this is a hill and this is a hill. I think that's good right here as far as the water goes. I'm just putting collar down. Okay, let's jump over here. Let me take that same brush. I'm going to use the same brush. That way I don't keep dirty up brushes. I'm going to fill this in. This looks like this is going to need some dark color. You always got to start with dark to show your light. So I'm going to take some black. I'm just going to go ahead and hold my palette some out of your way. Some black, sap green. And I'm just going to throw in some color real quick. This is kind of a hill situation back here. And I'm going to go ahead and put it down in the water here too because of the reflections. My palette's, my painting's jumping around on me here. If you're wondering what that noise is. 
let's just go ahead I'll, I'll just bring this I'll bring it up as high as I think we need it okay that's cool this is a hill back here this is a golden hill but to start with we have to put dark collars down so you can see the light you always you can't just put gold down you got a, a golden hill when i say a golden hill it is after it's finished but you got to have some darkness down so you can see that golden collar you can't just put gold up here i'm gonna go ahead and fill this in there's a big tree right here there and here so yeah this is good we'll just do it that way Okay, the trees covered that okay now for this down here this is all grass even back in here so let's get us a big brush that's not a big brush we find a big brush number four we're gonna start with some cad yellow light this this painting has a lot of yellow ochre in it a lot of yellows yellows and brown yellow and it's quickly going to hit yellow ochre Matter of fact i'll throw some of that up in here too um i'm gonna mix yellow ochre and cad yellow light i think the tree comes right here i'm gonna go ahead and mark it out I'm just going to throw this down, then we're going to mix it all up. Get some more yellow ochre. Let's take some sap green. This is just our base color. This is how I normally do it. I'm still looking up here at the picture. Just a little green. There's green right in here, I can see. I just noticed this almost looks like a path right here. I'm looking at this picture. I didn't realize that till just now. Ain't that interesting? That would be kind of cool, I guess. Let's take some Prussian blue. Let's take some Prussian blue down in here. And I got some lizard and crimson left over from my last painting. Red is a foreground color. We'll throw it in. Prussian blue. Lizard and crimson. That way I can use it. I believe this is a path right here. I'm going to put a path in right there, I think. But I did not even notice that. Shows you how much I pay attention. <laughs> looks like it comes, looks like it goes all the way here and comes around. Comes over. That's what it looks like. And let's take us a brush. I'll start mixing some of this up. I'm going to start back in here. I'm just going to go along that edge real quick. This is dirty and it's okay. This brush is. I would typically not stick a dirty brush in yellow paint like I'm doing, but it's okay for this painting. For this particular painting, I think it's okay. Because this is just the base anyway. We're gonna come all the way down here. Yeah, this is just our starting collar. This is not our finished product. And I'm trying to get all I can before I get down here in this blue. Because your brush is really contaminated once it hits this blue area. Yeah, I think that's good. I think we're okay now. Okay, I think that's good. All right, 
I am going to stop right there and figure out what else I'm going to do next. I just want to get this collar down is what I'm going to do today, I think. So I will be back in a minute. All right, I went ahead and worked on this a little bit, put some reflections in. I'm not sure I want to keep this dried. I might, I might not, I'm not sure. I change my mind a lot. But anyways, let's go ahead and do this area. This is a nice, has nice golden trees. A lot of this will be covered by a, this tree, but we got to put something there. We can't just, can't just leave it the way it is. So let's take a little yellow ochre. Let's take a little yellow ochre and let's just um, throw something back in there. As I said, a lot of this, you won't see it. Let's make some cad yellow light. Let's brighten it up a little bit more. The area you will see is about down in here. Um, cad yellow light, yellow ochre. You will see a few trees down in this area. But this up in here is just collar we have to put in. You might be able to see something here. Let me throw a little bit of collar in here. Uh, and I'm going to, I got little trees I got to put here, but I'm going to go ahead and start with this one. This is a number two and it's probably too small. So let me get a bigger one. Here's a brand new brush. Boy, I almost hate to use this thing. It's so pretty. <laughs> now I'll get this one. This is a number four. It's pretty big. I'm going to use raw umber. I'm going to start with raw umber. It's a good collar to make trees with when you're first starting to put your trees in. Oh, let's see. I think it needs to come down a little further than what I actually have it. Let's put it about down in here. Let's bring this thing on up. These actually come all the way up picture. This is wet. I'm not going to be able to finish these trees today, but I want to get them put in. I want to go ahead and get it, get that part done and over with. Get her done and over with. This tree just kind of splits off here and there. And at least we can get the shape of the tree. Um, this tree has all kinds of branches. This is a, this is the back tree. It's a big fat branch here. Big fat branch there. Another nice big fat, not as fat, but a fat branch. Down in here. Down there. Let's keep looking. There's branches everywhere. There's branches coming all the way over here. Now there's a big tree in front. So these branches here, you probably are not even going to see. But I'm going to put them in anyway because I just feel like I should. There's a branch here. A uh, branch probably comes over there, goes up there. We know there's a big one here. Yeah, we're just putting the collar down. Basically today forming our shapes. Now these branches on the left you can see. So I'll try to be a little more careful with some of these. I think there's a couple of little smaller branches that shoot off here. Okay, lots of limbs on this tree. Let's go ahead and put some paint down here. This tree has a twisted look to it. Looking at this picture, it's kind of twisted. Whether my paint, my tree comes up twisted, I don't know, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I don't know if I like that road. As I said, I you know, just adapt. If you don't like something, don't use it. It's and we're looking at a picture. That don't mean you gotta follow it exactly. Sometimes that'll drive you nuts trying to do that because it's just totally unnecessary. 
Let's see, I think we got a big branch coming out through here. It's going to be hidden, some of it, but we got to put it in. Okay. Hmm, that don't look too bad. I'm going to do this other one off camera to save time because we got a lot of work to do still. And, but we're moving along. I'm, I'm pleased with what we've got done so far. So anyways, I'll be back. I'm going to put this one off camera and I will be back. All right, let's go ahead. I put the one in, put this tree in. I, I don't think I'm going to keep this road. I, I'm just going to cover it up. But let's go ahead and run some highlights on this back tree. It is, it is wet. I'm, I'm going to take some yellow ochre. I got a pile of white here. It's kind of dirty. And that's okay. I mean, you know. <laughs> but I'm going to set my palette down, get a clean paper towel. And this is wet. So I don't, you know, it's going to mix pretty well. So I'm not really worried. And this, there's going to be leaves all over the place. But we're just going to highlight some of the areas that might be seen. That one might be seen. And that one might be seen. I'm twisting my brush like this as I'm coming down because if you don't do that your paint is not going to come off your brush right. You're going to run out of paint off your brush. So you have to twist it as you're bringing your brush down. I did wipe this tree off a little bit but it's still pretty darn wet and that's okay. But these collars are not golden enough for me. I want them more golden than that, so I'll work on that later. Yellow ochre and white is what we're using right now. This front tree, I'm going to do it probably off camera. But um, I'm just wanting to throw some collar in here. Get this show going. Just throw some stuff in here. So it looks like we're doing something. I'm going to take some pure yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is a very golden color. I mean, I'm, I'll be using a lot of that today. I'm going to take some burnt sienna. Mix it with yellow ochre. You want lots of colors in your trees and stuff. This, this probably will not be our last pass on this tree, but this is getting us started. This is just pure burnt sienna here. The sun is, the light is coming down from the upper right down this way, kind of almost straight into these trees. So there's going to be a lot of light on the front of these trees. And we're just going to fool around with these and get them the way we want them, right? Okay, I got me some Prussian blue now. I had to pause a second there. I ran out. But um, let's just run it down the back side. It's a really good, I just really like it for shadows mainly. I mean, I, I use a lot of it. But I always use it on the back side of trees and things of that nature simply because I think it gives it a real nice effect. I mean, you know, not everyone will agree with that, but I, I do. I think it gives it a great effect. And we're going to bring it on down there. Yeah, there's a lot of leaves on this, so a good portion of this you won't even see. And besides that, the, looking at the picture, these branches are dark, pretty dark anyway. I'm just going to kind of kind of blend some of this Prussian blue up a little bit. Blend it into the tree. Because you don't want any straight lines like this one I'm working on is kind of straight. You don't want stuff like that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started on our grass here. Went ahead and worked on this tree a little bit. Might have to hit it again a little bit later, but for now it's okay. We're going to go ahead and do some grass. I've, I'm using a big brush. This brush is really big compared to what I normally use, but 
Yeah, that's quite a bit of stuff here. Um, I'm going to mix some cad yellow light with some yellow ochre. Mm, let's, let's see, let's start here and see what happens. I said, I normally don't use a brush quite so big, but I don't know, I just wanted to, I guess. If we don't like it, we'll change brushes, won't we? Is there only one way to find out if you like a certain brush, and that's to use it. Okay, come over here and get some of that. Probably get some on our tree, and it's nothing to worry about if you do. Oh, a little bit sticking up. So this is, I want this to be a nice golden color. I might even throw a little brown in here today for a different color kind of grass. Let's put a little bit back in here. And, I, and I'm going to cover this road up. Just don't like it. I need some back in here. That's hard to get there. I'll have to take a small brush and get that. Let's take a touch of brown. And then, boy, we're touch of brown, a little bit of green. I, I don't know what color this is going to be. Let's see. That's okay, I guess. A little muddy looking, but let's put a little bit more green in that. If we don't like it, I'll wipe it off. <laughs> Do it again. I, I usually don't put brown in my grass. I mean, it's pretty weird. It's just for this certain picture that I'm here today. It's just different looking. It don't look too bad so far. Let's see how it looks back in here. Tight spot there in it. Yellow ochre green touch of brown touch of green actually it's kind of dark back in here I might even make it I'll make it kind of dark yeah I'm wanting the golden brownish look today if possible But I just don't normally put brown in my grass. You know, you don't know how something looks till you try it, man. That's the only way to know. I mean, it don't look that bad. Actually, some of it's put a little crimson in that. A little reddish color to it. Don't seem to look too bad. Put some crimson in this. It needs to be a lot darker. There's some raw umber. It'll darken at that point. It is definitely a brownish looking. something or other. I don't think it's too bad. Different collars, fall collars. I, I tell you what, I'm gonna, this is a, only a couple minutes have passed. I was looking at it. I think I am gonna put a tree. I think I'm gonna stop it maybe right here. I think I'm gonna bring it there. Uh, you know, I could put it here, but I, I like this area. I don't really want to block that off. Man, decisions, decisions. I don't know. So, you know what? To help me make my decision, I think I'm just going to put a mark on here, and I have no choice now to... 
This don't have to be a big tree. I probably already got too big. <laughs> but I'm using raw umber for this. It does not have to be a big tree. As a matter of fact, I don't want it to be a big tree. I just kind of want it kind of a kind of a straight tree with some branches shooting off here and there. Yeah, I don't want a big tree right here, but it does need three trees. We'll just see what happens here. It may wind up being bigger. Who knows? You just got to feel your way through these things, man. I mean, you know, when you're just making things up, you <laughs> if it don't look right, you got to work with it a little bit. So that's what we're going to do. If it don't look right, we're going to work with it until it does look right. And I may put red on this tree. That's another idea I had. Just for collar. Needs a little collar, don't it? Needs a little collar in its life. Maybe just a little more, but that, that's about as big as I probably want it. I just don't want some big, crazy looking tree right here. Let's do another branch or two here and there. A lot of some leaves will probably be covering that. And then just put another little branch right here. That might be good. So I don't want a big tree. So I think I think we're just going to leave that the way it is. All right, let me show you the color I'm using here. This is brown, and I'm mixing it with yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is yellow and brown mixed together, pretty much. But I'm just adding more brown to it. Uh, this is my base color. This is what I want to start with. There's quite a few leaves on this tree, believe it or not. Uh, there's some that's on the ground, but there's also quite a few in this tree. But I want to start with a dark collar first. Brown, just add it to the yellow ochre. Um, I'll bring it. I'll bring it out here. I don't want to get into this. I'll just put that tree in. I want to stay away from that for today. Let it dry a little bit. But there's there's actually quite a few leaves on this. This tree is a golden collar, golden brownish. That's, that's what I want it to wind up being. Whether that's the way it comes out, I don't know, but that's what we're going to shoot for. But boy, there is really a lot of leaves on here. <laughs> that doesn't look like there's much on this on this side of the tree, shockingly enough. But we can, we can make things up as we go. We can change things here and there. This is a number three round. That I'm using, I'm just kind of just flipping some leaves in for now. In areas that I want to cover up, see, I have a little boo boo here, I'll cover that up. This is a good time to do stuff like that. This painting sat for a day, let's see, actually two days. This painting's been sitting two days, so, so a lot of this is fairly dry, which is beneficial for this kind of stuff. Um, I'm just looking around here. I like this fork. I may throw some, even though there's no leaves actually on the front of this tree, believe it or not, I'm still going to put some here because I think it needs it. And my collars are going to get more yellow and yellow 
as we're going along here. I'll put some right here. Oh, that was probably good for now until I see what's happening here. At least I think it is. Let me put a few right here. Probably shouldn't have done that quite yet. That's still real wet. That's okay. Okay, let's go ahead. I went ahead and put some leaves on this tree. Let's go ahead and put some leaves on the ground. I've already started down here. So let's put some more. I'm going to take some brown. I'm going to take brown and I'm just going to put it down first. Just in random areas. And then I'm going to put collar on top of that. The brown can be shadow, and of course the leaves are kind of a golden color. I'm going to do the same over here for the smaller tree. I'm going to have to use a smaller brush, and I just so happen to have one sitting behind me. This is just brown. You can use raw umber too. This is burnt umber. And we're just showing that there's leaves falling. I'm going to put a couple bushes, I think, in here to just a little bit more interest. But I mean, I like I like this painting so far. I like these collars. They're different than what I normally do. I might need to darken this up in this corner. But it's different, man. It's a fall scene, you know. We might do a few more of them before it falls up. And then we have to start on the winter paintings. But um, just randomly throwing leaves in. Now I'm going to get some yellow ochre. And I'm going to put on top of the brown I just put in. The brown is going to be kind of a shadow. So the yellow ochre is going to go on top of the brown at the top part of it. Let me see, find where I put all these. I got them scattered now, don't I? But see, it also makes them stick out. You put this yellow ochre on. And you can see a little better where things are. All the, there's plenty of leaves on here. Fall's just starting. That's what we're going to say. And when you're doing your own painting, you make these determinations yourself. You're going to say fall just started. But I, I like this painting so far. And we're real close to being finished with it. I mean, I just got to put some bushes in. I might take a liner brush, make, make some more branches. I think it might need that. Um, let's go ahead and put some bushes in. Let's see, a one inch brush. It might be okay to use. Let's take some black. I was wondering if a one inch brush might be too big. I may put one right here just to darken this corner up. Okay, let's put one probably here. We don't know what kind of bushes these are, but it's okay. They're filling in some space right there because it needs something. There's one, two, three bushes, and that'll work. So now, I got me a collar out already I'm going to use, magenta. Let me get me a clean spot on my paper towels here. Kind of wipe this off a little bit. Magenta is not too bright. It's a red, but it's not too bright. I like using cad yellow light, light a lot of times, but uh, yeah, it might be a little too bright for this. 
Let's see the sun's coming down from the upper right to the left. Okay. Let's get this one in the corner. Yeah, magenta is kind of a it's a toned down red. Got a little purplish kind of looks like, don't it? It's a good color. Let me touch a little bit of white on this. Find me some white. Just to brighten it a little. Just to give it an extra color. Yeah, it's probably not too bad. We don't want this super bright here in the corner. Okay. Let me get me a small fan brush and let's make a few shadows while you are watching. Because I usually don't do this while you're watching. I just, nothing, for no, no reason. I just don't, you know, it's just kind of slow. But I think this might be kind of, let's see. Let's take this, let's look at our shadows. I basically a lot of times just pull them out like this and I'll have to get some more of my brush if this ain't enough and it's not. Raw umber, touch of Prussian blue. Make some shadows. Because the sun's coming down this way. Okay, that don't look too bad. Let's darken this just a little. Because there's still some leaves up here. All right, folks, that looks like a wrap. I like it, man. I think it turned out pretty good. It's a nice fall scene. We'll probably be doing a few more of those. Hey, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe for more future videos. Now, thanks for watching.